All right, so these hutches look awesome. I'm only gonna stack them probably three high in here, but I just saw that my babies, oh, I'm hooked on, I'm hooked, I'm hooked. Okay, I just saw that my babies were out of their nest box and they were trying to get on mama. Where are your babies at? Where are your babies at? I saw them. Where are they? Are they under there? I saw them try to nurse on you. I saw them try to nurse on you. There they are. There they are. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. You're okay. These are two of my baby home laps. There they go. They're trying to get mom. They're trying to drink from mommy. They're like, what are you doing, mama? Now, one concern I had was if they got old enough and they could be jumping around that they would get into, they would get into this crack right here, but I think that they, I don't think that they would, really. I don't think we'll have a problem with that. I don't know why she's not letting them nurse. They're thirsty, mama. They're thirsty. I love the, the uh, glass doors. Well, they're not glass, it's plexiglass. But I really like that because then I can see, I can see how much hay they have left and refill their hair. They've been doing a really good job eating their hay and getting their nosies in there. They can actually, can actually fit her whole head in there so she can reach around in there. But they do, um, and she pulls out some hay. But, uh, but a lot of it they keep contained. Yep, you've pulled out some hay. I need to check that out. I have her breeding with this buck right now. And, um, but the hay is a lot less wasted. Now in this corner, so they should be using their litter box, but I noticed that they're trying to create a pea spot over there. Not acceptable. So what I'll do is I'll just really clean that spot out with um, some nice stuff and then just um, reiterate that the poopy spot is over here. That's where you need to poop and pee. So I'll just go ahead and um, clean that up and um, make that known to them again. Hi, this is Elizabeth Kwan with Homesteading for Health and we are Homesteading for Health. And um, our, I, do ha I do breed Hall and Lot bunnies. And those aren't for food, those are for pets, but every garden should have a bunny and every, every bunny should have a garden, in my opinion. So um, whether that's a meat, you could do a meat rabbit um, if you want more self-sustainable, but rabbits are so much fun for kids to have as pets. And Hall and Lops have such a really great personality and they're small, so they don't have, um, you know, you don't have as much space to put them in. It's a good starter pet for a kid to learn from. And um, and I just really love, uh, I love breeding them because they're so cute and so sweet. So that's my, that's my fun. And we'll look at the kittens, see how they're doing. So our, I intentionally only have one farm cat, mommy. They've opened their eyes. So cute. Open your eyes. Yeah. And, um, oh. It's so cute. I actually only have one mama cat. She is a great hunter. Check out the video of her catching a mouse in our house. Um, she is a great hunter and then we have two orange cats and then we just got Fisher and I'll show you an update of Mr. Fisher who was found abandoned at a reservoir among crevices of rocks. It was horrible um, and he was so tiny and little. I think he was probably six weeks old. Flea ridden, wormy, like really bad. So um, I'm really glad that we were able to save him and um, help him. Today I'm going to be working on my hutches, but also I need to harvest all of my peppers, my pepper plants. And I've also seen a many videos of pepper plants being perennial. 
Yes, they're perennial. And you can take them in for the winter time. So I'm going to do this as an experiment to see if it's worth it in my area because it's such a long winter for me, for our area. So I, I don't know how the energy in keeping a plant that long I'm not sure that it would be super beneficial. I wonder how fast it would produce a pepper and if it would be really advantageous for me to try to keep a pepper plant. So I'm gonna experiment with that today. Okay, Fisher is not a house cat, but he is watching Dora with Nayeli right now. And he's purring. <sighs> I think he's a little cautious with Nene, but yeah, you're the one that picks him up the most, I think. He's purring. Lily. Lily. Hi, Lily. Hi. Hi, Mama. Hi. Here are those piggies. Hey, piggies. Piggies. I actually like to get them in a smaller space just because they're going to be, um, we're going to be turning this area into a winter paddock for our cow and our goats. Um, Daddy got the shed cleaned out. This area is not totally cleaned out, but we're also, you know, we got to get this, this uh, paddock set up because Basically in the pasture in that area, there's really not much for them to eat anymore. Um, so we might as well dry lot them uh, for the winter time. And so we need to get that prepared. I need to move the, this Mr. Goat over here. I need to get him in another spot too. Uh, so he will be in an area until probably um, Probably December 15th is when we will let him be with the does to populate them. Because we like to do it December 15th just so that it's after the last frost date here and that the ground is well thawed and uh, or thawing. And um, that just gives the baby goats a better chance at well not a better chance I mean they they just would do better with warmer weather they'll just do better with warmer weather and they have their mommies and they can sit on their mommies and um, it, a lot of people kid in the winter time which is hard because you have to like supply heat and that costs energy and time and then you always have the fear of well what if they don't have their babies close enough to the heat lamps or you know what if something goes wrong there I don't know it's just not worth that to me um, yeah you can start selling earlier in the year and a lot of people like to use the 4-H projects uh, and a lot of those they want them birthed at the beginning of the year so so that they're big enough to be able to be shown appropriately at that time. But I'm not going to concern myself with that right now. I'm just going to kid when it is most beneficial for my flock. What are you doing, Darian? You probably should harvest a lot more watermelon. This is going to freeze. Darian's helping them dig a well. I mean, Sean. Okay, this is quite ridiculous. I've got many, many beautiful, beautiful peppers. And we are going to be uh, dehydrating a lot of these and trying to use some fresh, giving them away. Um, but <laughs> I don't know if I need to plant so many peppers next year or plant a variety of peppers. All of these are um, north, uh, uh, the uh, north, um, red north uh, bell pepper very delicious and uh, I should probably also plant um, some orange ones next year so maybe some jalapenos some serrano peppers uh, some uh, some variety 
so that we can do some more fun things with it, maybe make some salsa. But I'm gonna uh, now try to get a one overwintered. And I guess the, I thought it was gonna freeze tonight, but it's not actually gonna freeze till Friday. I was looking at Silverthorne, Colorado, where we went on vacation. Cause I added it to my, you know, scroll of, of temperature uh, weather. <laughs> so a bit uh, early on that, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that pepper plant now. I got hit pretty hard, but I have seen pepper plants kind of snap back from the root. The leaves kind of wilt, so um, I am just going to go ahead and pot it and hope for the best. Okay, I'm definitely not afraid of failing right here. I have nothing to lose, so um, I'm going to go ahead and take off a lot of the foliage and just leave uh, some of these branches. See, this one didn't get frosted way down here, so um, I'm going to just take off a lot, prune it back. A lot. Okay, this is how my perennial plant, my perennial pepper is gonna look for a while. And that's okay. You're, um, it was really, plants are very amazing at just regenerating and growing. Um, I'm gonna water, I'm gonna deeply water uh, the pepper plant and it's gonna stay in the shop um, between the hutches I'm gonna have these lights here. So like maybe put a, uh, like a, uh, a table between the two hutches, well, a shelf. And then the fluorescent lights are gonna be light for my, some of my plants. So um, if there's anything else that I want to bring in from outside, I should do that now. Cause it's gonna be a lot cool. It's gonna be quite a bit colder tonight than it was last night. So we shall see what my pepper plant does. Is my is it worth my question? Well, hopefully I, I am able to keep this surviving, but my question is, is it worth it in Iowa to keep a pepper plant, overwinter a pepper plant? So, because there's lots of things you could overwinter if you chose to do, like basil and all this stuff. So I'm gonna see if it's worth it to me to overwinter a pepper plant to see how fast I can get pepper plants next year. Hopefully I don't kill the thing. We'll, we'll find out together.